Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with Let's Talk Money. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to another one of these informal videos. Uh, today is a super important video because we're hearing a lot about these reverse splits lately, especially stocks in the energy sector. I'm seeing a lot of questions in our private Facebook group, Let's Talk Money Together, about the reverse split and whether it helps investors. So today we'll look at why stocks do a reverse split, the reason companies tell investors and why they really do them. And we'll look at the research behind these, whether they really increase or decrease value and how they differ, differ from more of those popular stock splits that you hear about. I'll leave a clickable index in the description below the video if you want to skip over some of this basic definition that we'll cover first. And with that massive drop in share prices, we're seeing a boom in these reverse splits in the energy sector. Okay, Chesapeake Energy announced a one for 200 split. We've got a lot of these in popular oil funds like the USO reverse split and the one for five reverse split announced for shares of the AMLP fund. Now in reality, a reverse split is pretty simple. A company notifies the SEC through a Form 8K, which is just the form that it uses to notify the public of any material changes in, in the investment or the company. Now the company will also declare the ratio for the split, so maybe a 1 for 10 split for example, and when the split's going to happen. Well, what happens in a reverse split is the number of shares of that stock outstanding decreases by that ratio. And it's a little confusing because it's not really a split, but a merging by that amount. So in our example of a 1 for 10 split, 10 shares merge into 1. So if the company had 1,000 shares available in the market before, after the split, it's gonna, now it's going to have 100 shares available. Now nothing really happens to the company. This is all on paper. So if the company is still worth that same amount, but it has less shares available, then the value is spread across fewer shares. So if the company was worth $2 million with 1,000 shares outstanding before that split, it would have a share price of $2,000. That's $2 million divided by those 1,000 shares. Now if the company does that reverse split, that 1 for 10 reverse split, it's still worth $2 million, but now divided by 100 shares, so the share price is now $20,000 per share. I know it can be confusing the first time you see it, so let's look at a real world example. The United States oil fund, ticker USO, recently announced a 1 for 8 reverse split. So after the split, eight shares are gonna consolidate into each one. The fund is approximately 620 million shares outstanding and it stopped creating those new shares earlier this month. So that's a static number for now. Now this fund is trading at $2.19 per share. Now after the reverse split, the USO will have approximately 77.5 million shares outstanding. That's that 620 million divided by eight, and then the share price is gonna immediately shoot up to about 1750 per share, or about eight times that current price. So then what happens to my investment after a reverse split? If shares of USO jump eightfold, that must be a good thing, right? Well, not exactly. The shares in your investing account also did that reverse split. So if previously you owned 800 shares of USO before that one for eight reverse stock split, you now only own 100 shares. And those other measures like the price you paid per share is going to change as well. So if you originally paid $3 per share for 800 shares or a $2,400 total investment, you still would have paid $2,400 for that investment. The only difference is now that your account says you paid $24 for those 100 shares. So you see nothing has really changed except on paper. You don't lose shares in a reverse split, they just merge into fewer shares. If you had options in the stock, those would adjust automatically as well. So for example, if you had call options to buy the USO at a $5 per share strike price, that strike price is gonna adjust eight times higher to $40 a share. So if nothing really changes though, then why do companies actually do reverse splits? And a lot of times management's gonna come out with, with some bullshit reasoning like it's to increase shareholder sentiment or, or liquidity, but there's really only two reasons that a reverse split is done. First is a negative assumption about stocks that trade under five or $10 each. Uh, even though stock price really means nothing on its own, a lot of investors look at those sub $5 stocks as cheap or penny stocks. And by the way, this isn't the real definition of a penny stock either. A penny stock is actually a company with a market capitalization of under a billion dollars or limited trading liquidity. It has nothing to do with the stock price. But public opinion is that higher stock prices just means healthier companies. Some investors, and this is even true for some mutual funds, might avoid stocks priced in those single digits altogether. So a lot of companies try to keep their stocks above $10 per share. Now the second reason a company might decide on a reverse split is to keep it from being delisted from the exchange. So stocks trading on the NASDAQ, which is the digital marketplace, or the New York Stock Exchange, which is the trading floor in New York, they have to maintain a share price of a dollar per share. 
And if they fall below that level or below a certain number of shares traded on a daily basis for over a period, they get delisted and you can't buy or sell them on that exchange. Yeah, the exchanges don't want no scrubs either. Okay, long way to go for a TLC reference, but no judgments here. Anyway, what happens to a stock after it reverse splits? Now, most obviously the share price jumps immediately, but we've already seen that's kind of misleading. What really happens to the stock's value immediately after and then longer after the split? So immediately after the reverse split, you know, stocks do often see kind of a slight bump in value, even above that split adjusted price. Uh, new investors see the higher price and the split seems to lend some kind of a, a short-term optimism to the stock. You know, something like, okay, the worst is over and now we can just move on. Of course, this is all assuming that the reasons behind the stock prices fall in the first place don't take another hit. So for example, if oil prices plunge again after that USO fund splits, those shares are gonna continue to fall. Now over the longer term though, the research is a little less positive. Researchers at the Stern School of Business at NYU and Emory University looked at four decades of reverse splits to 2001 and found that of 1,600 reverse splits, shares underperformed their non-split peers by 15.6% in the first year following the split. Now worse though, they continued to lag by 36% in the second year and 54% in the third year. But now I think the research into these reverse splits kind of hides the fact because while a lot of these companies are doomed to fail, right? Uh, they had shitty business plans and the reverse split just couldn't fix it. Uh, so these spectacular failures drive that average down and just hide the fact that some companies actually do quite well after their split. You know, Citigroup is a good example of this here with its split in 2011, as well as other companies like AIG and Priceline. So I don't think you should necessarily sell your stocks before a reverse split. It's just not that simple. It's not really that reverse splits are good or bad either way. Uh, you have to look at the company or the investing theme if it's a fund and just do your own analysis on those fundamentals. A reverse split isn't going to fix a bad business model or crap products but it might be enough of a sentiment boost, just a little bit more of a boost to help a good company get back on its feet. Now, reverse splits shouldn't be confused with this other kind of stock split that you hear about. Now, these are basically the same, but they say something completely different about the company. So we saw in that reverse split, the shares merge. If you do a one for 10 reverse split, then 10 shares reduces into one. Now in a regular stock split though, the shares really do split. So if you have a 10 for one stock split, then for every one share, you're gonna have 10 shares after the split. So it's really the opposite of that reverse split. And while stocks in trouble usually make those, those reverse split route, a regular stock split is usually done by companies with a surging stock price. And the reason here is usually to lower the stock price to a point where more investors can buy in. A good example here is Apple, ticker AAPL, which has split quite a few times, but the most recent one was a seven for one split in June, 2014. So before the split, Apple was trading at around $586 a share. That's the closing price on June 6th before the split. And then after the split, you're always gonna see the charts and the historical stock data adjust. So you have to know where it traded on before that split. And at that price, that means a lot of people aren't gonna be able to be investors. If you didn't have at least $600 to invest, you couldn't even buy a single share. Now, after the split on June 9th, the shares were trading at $85.10 a share a much more reasonable amount for the average investor and, and actually a little higher than that pre-split price. And the research shows that stocks going through that regular split actually do get a little bump afterwards. And researchers at Columbia Business and the University of Illinois found a bump averaging up to 2.5% for stocks after a split, some of it from that increased investor pool and some just from positive sentiment. Click on the video to the right for the most frequent investor questions you need to answer. Questions like how many stocks should you own and how much to invest in each, all right here. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.